Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. It's nice to have you all on board on this very chilly morning in Lithuania. We have uh, right now minus 15 in Venus. We are enjoying different temperatures around Europe. And today we want to attract your attention to some important topics of uh, landscape, landscape architects' profession. So firstly, who we are. We are a group of uh, uh, universities from several European countries. We are acting so under the umbrella of IFLA Europe. So we are... Uh, next slide, please. We are a group of uh, European universities, as you see in this list under the umbrella of uh, IFLA Europe. Uh, we are running an international study project, which is funded by Erasmus Plus program. And the goal is to look on some important issues of uh, landscape architects profession, including studies and professional practice. And the first thing is a common training framework is our goal. We will talk today mainly about this topic. Uh, the next goal is uh, to establish a pan-European quality standard for landscape architecture education. And the short-term goal is uh, to uh, create an, a model of exemplar master in landscape architecture study program. Until this goal, you see on the far right-hand side, the CTFLA, we have to go through quite different and quite uh, complicated steps. And one of the initial steps is today when we start the public consultations and talking with you about the meaning of this common training framework, its importance, its, some technical aspects, and then looking forward to developing a draft and presenting it to the main bodies that are regulating both studies and professional practice, practice of landscape architects in Europe. Uh, this means uh, IFLA Europe and ECLAS. So why we... Uh, aim at common training framework and why is this an important goal as we all think today and we will share these, these ideas with you today. Uh, firstly, we have a variety of landscape architecture st study standards across Europe and our goal is to harmonize this as much as it is possible. Uh, landscape architecture professionals in different countries encounter different dif type of difficulties in their mobility going from one another to the other country and practicing the profession. So we want to facilitate mobility of professionals across the European continent. The activities with common training framework are done in favor of all EU member states and even beyond EU member states. This means that we are looking for the benefit that all countries should benefit from this. The process of doing such a document, of course, should be very transparent and inclusive. And this is why we start today this inclusiveness and we involve, we invite participants from different countries, from different associations to hear it from the very beginning, to say your opinions, to say your concerns and to have this all in mind until the last process, the last step when the CTF is approved by the associations. Our goal is a pan-European legal regulation act. And this is, believe me, this is a very important thing because you know that architects profession is regulated by certain directive. And when certain questions arise, uh, authorities and also chambers and associations are always referring to this European legal act. So our goal is to uh, adopt finally, as a final step, the legal regulatory act, which will have impact on the profession and on studies. And of course, we're doing this under the umbrella of IFLA Europe and ECLAS, because these two bodies are, are our main professional associations that are acting in favor of the profession. Next, please. So what we will do today, we will talk a bit what is this CTF, this abbreviation might be quite new for some of you. Uh, we are using a shorter title, CTF, which means Common Training Framework. We will talk what is the role and why we would need this Common Training Framework as a document. Uh, we will talk today about the regulatory process and how this uh, Common Training uh, document gets under the Professional Qualifications Directive. We will talk about the key actors. Who are these key actors uh, uh, who will be involved into the creation, creating common training framework and into the, in, in the benefit from it. Then we will look on the physical structure 
of common training framework as it is regulated by the uh, professional qualifications directive. And we will see how this regulation, what impact this regulation expectedly will make on the profession across the European So we have very elaborated agenda. We will try to stick very strictly to the timing. And of course, we will have time. And our main goal is to listen for you, to hear your opinions, to hear your voices, to hear your concerns, and to mind all this while creating this common training frame. So let me now go to the next presentation, and then we can follow our agenda. Uh, thank you, Jean Taras. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning to you all. My name is Katerina Goldziu. Um, I'm the IFLEA Europe Vice President of Professional Practice, and I was invited today just to briefly describe you our communication with the DG Grow regarding the Common Training uh, Framework. So we can understand that basically the reality of the profession, as Chintara just described to you, is that this different and variety position of the profession among countries and what's happening with the mobility status of the profession in general. So just a brief uh, map here just to present that at the time being, based on the uh, research that we have done, 13 countries in Europe where the profession of landscape architecture is recognized at national level in EU sense are uh, France, Czech Republic, Germany, Hungary, Italy, Luxembourg, Slovakia, Slovenia, the Netherlands, and United Kingdom. And from the EA, Iceland, Switzerland, the part of Geneva, and from the national Austria. So in IFLA Europe, we've been working on the common training framework I'm going just to give you a very brief uh, what is a common training framework and a further free talk will elaborate further what it's about. So in order for all of us to understand a common training framework, it's a common set of minimum knowledge, skills and competence which are necessary for the pursuit of the profession. So we need, uh, we need at least one third of the member states that combines this knowledge, skill, and competence, which are required. So common training framework, what it should be understood from all of us is that they should not replace national training programs unless member state decides otherwise. So common training frameworks would have no effects on existing qualifications and no retroactive effects in general. Regarding the process of introducing a common frame, training framework, uh, what it was recommended from anywhere from the European Commission is that they should follow a bottom-up approach in the sense that representative professional organization at union level, as well as national organizations, from at least one third, as we said, from the member state may submit to the Commission's suggestion from the common training framework. So what is really needed, the need, the needed, because they just want the needs of the profession. So regarding the meetings that we have with the Director General of the growth of internal market, and we have been discussing, of course, about the regulation. Yeah. Common training framework, common training framework has to, has a big uh, consequence and the condition that, that they should be fulfilled should provide solutions regarding problems of free movements. And of course, what it was asked from us is basically to gather complaints because so far they said that they didn't have any complaints regarding mobility uh, among uh, countries or any other so sort of problems from member states. What they were insisting, and they were insisting on the idea of the common training framework, is that, okay, this can be used as a tool for regulation, but the, it should be used to enhance the economic flow. If we want to talk about creating a common training framework, what they were saying is basically how we can make the market more achievable. So common training framework should not be uh, faced as a, an instrument of force. It means that is a common body of understanding of the profession regarding its activities and 
uh, it can be you can combine requirements such for example as mobility as we're going to talk further so the problem is if the profession is still at this uh, stage of heterogeneity between countries then it becomes more difficult for such a framework to be established and approved i'm just putting here the link of the professional qualification directive as recently uh, amended in 2022 just to show some examples that are described there and you, you can further read on that that they were saying that for example the examples of engineer or healthcare assistants although these two disciplines uh, they were describing and they were proving that they need requirements of being regulated in many countries the profession were so heterogeneous that the studies did not lead to a common training framework. Uh, in the case of doctor of, or nurses, common training framework was developed despite the difficulties, difficulties, but because they have proved that it was an issue of public health, then the uh, commission was um, accepted and they had a common training framework. So what it was recommended that if we can justify the landscape architects uh, can prove that there is a threat somehow on public health and so on, then a common training framework can be start uh, being discussed. I'm going to present you briefly uh, a survey that we're doing regarding the professional recognition assistance in IFLA Europe. And one of the questions, uh, it was regarding mobility, for example, how a foreign architect can work in, uh, in uh, your country, uh, what obstacles might encounter, what difficulties or requirements. So among the 11 countries that we took uh, answers so far, and is where the profession is not regulated, uh, the main answers were that a foreign uh, landscape architect, of course, can work as a domestic landscape architect, and it will, he will face or she will face the same problems, of course, as uh, a domestic landscape architect. So, no obstacles really, since most foreign landscape architect are uh, happening because they are working in interdisciplinary teams, for example, in some countries like Belgium, or there might be problems like networking or language problems, and it was Denmark, and this has to do mostly with working on public uh, projects. So the, the, the foreign, uh, as you can understand, uh, landscape architects might understand the process, the regulations, the building code, codes, and so on. So the next, it's about uh, the results that we took from the eight countries that we had, um, we got results. And they were saying that the country that, of course, the profession is regulated, that a foreign landscape architect, in order to work, should at least uh, have the protected title of landscape architect, uh, as it happened in Germany, or registration with a local professional order or license, or hold a business permit, or join a chamber in the country. Of course, the above depends on whether someone wishes to establish himself or herself and to provide services on a temporary basis. The next is that landscape architects basically uh, are not covered by a system of, uh, in some countries, uh, of automatic recognition under the EU professional qualification uh, directive. So uh, an approval uh, on a case-by-case -case basis by need uh, might be necessary. So, Another obstacle, of course, is insufficient uh, knowledge of legal provision regarding building regulations, administrative procedures, tendering procedures, and so on, or standards, what recognize rule or technology. Of course, language is a barrier too, and as it happens in Italy, for example, uh, the foreign codification is not recognized as a, as a qualification to work in a public field. Or they have to have a license, so a lack of license is an obstacle too. These are the main problems. And at the time we're in a communications meeting with Mr. Fron, who is the head of the unit, uh, in order to understand further uh, how many, for example, common training framework have been worked in the meantime, how we can 
uh, what are the standards, what are the conditions, and so on. So thank you very, very much for listening to me. Um, I'm here for any questions that you might have. Thank you. So the next uh, speaker, I presume, Fritz, can elaborate further about the profession, the common training framework and professional qualification directive. Thank you. Yes, uh, you see, uh, so those who know me uh, said Marina and me, we were uh, with uh, uh, IFLA Europe, but because of internal problems, uh, was, uh, substantial work uh, as advisor in the, in the Innerland project, we are now members of Le Nôtre Institute and are not related with uh, IFLA Europe. So this is very important to, uh, for the future to be not accused. Uh, if we talk about, I have uh, in the title, there are two uh, matters, uh, the professional regulation. Katharina talked already about, I will uh, add some additional aspects and the common training framework the same. If we talk about professional regulation, we always use the term professional. But what is our profession? Where is it defined? And the second thing is who has the, uh, uh, is responsible for the regulation. Uh, if we go uh, to uh, look around the world, we have only in the International Labour Organization, uh, it's uh, ILO, we have uh, the instrument of international standard classification of occupations, so-called ISCO in Europe. It is the same, it's called ESCO, European Standard Classification of Occupation, but ESCO is very strongly oriented on ISCO. So in ISCO you will find most of the professions you know uh, and uh, with a short definition. The last version of ISCO is from 2008, it is still valid and you see the definition of our profession. It has to be very short, three quarters of a, of a page and has a short entrance definition and then listed the tasks you will see later on. Uh, and uh, the existing definition uh, is uh, very classical, but it is limiting our tasks. It is not actual what the understanding of our profession is. And therefore, uh, IFLA World set up an uh, international working group. This working group uh, worked uh, more than uh, one year, one to two years, and uh, say, um, worked out a new definition in close relation to the responsible persons of ELO. The only problem is uh, that we go got allowance, uh, our profession said we change, said we modify our definition, but the process uh, of modification will start this year, this uh, spring, and will last some years. So as far as uh, the responsible persons of ELO know, uh, our new definition fits with uh, the uh, ELO frame conditions, but it could be that there is a change. If Laveur decided that we will take the new definition and uh, if the World Council voted it and therefore at the moment it is translated in the most common languages and it should be used worldwide because the, uh, until the new definition is in a new uh, ISCO, it will take some years. You see here the definition. Uh, uh, the first part is uh, the describing our tasks uh, and our understanding and the second part are the, the task in detail. If we go back to one slide, please. Uh, I will only read the first sentence of the new definition. 
but you can see that there is a quite a different understanding now. Landscape architects plan, design and manage natural, rural and built environments, applying aesthetic and scientific principles to address the sustainability, quality and health of landscape, collective memory, heritage and culture and territorial justice. I will not read the second sentence, but if you compare this understanding of the first sentence with the existing definition from 2008, there is quite a difference in the understanding and in the range uh, of our uh, the understanding of our profession. And now we are coming to uh, the regulation. If you go to the professional qualifications directive, uh, Katharina mentioned already and uh, said some uh, details. I will uh, tell again, why is this professional qualifications theory directive inside European Union so important for our profession? It is important because either you are in the um, automatic uh, recognition like the architects or the nurses, they have our own paragraph an article, not paragraph, an article in this PICO-D. This will never happen to our profession. Therefore, we have to go by this way. Katharina already mentioned the article uh, 49A with the common training framework. But in the PQD in Article 3 there is uh, described what is a regulated profession. It's, it's a difference to a recognized profession. Regulation is more general. Uh, and the important thing from this sentence is that uh, if you go to the uh, fourth line, by virtue of a legislative, regulatory or administrative provisions, to the possession of specific professional qualifications. What does this mean? If we go to the next slide. You see here it is very practical. This is a, a, a checking uh, map from the DG Grow. And uh, you see the uh, six questions which are important for the question are we a regulated profession or not? As the first thing is, are some activities reserved to the profession and is a specific qualification required to exercise these reserved activities or can everybody do it or only landscape architects? And you see the one behind this sentence, a positive answer to this question means that the profession is regulated. So this is one possibility. Then it comes uh, some uh, questions we cannot, we, I, I will go over, but the very important thing is the 3.6 is the use of the title of the profession reserved to persons holding a given qualification. And here again, a positive answer to this question means that the profession is regulated. So the two important questions are, is the title reserved to policy persons holding a given qualification? And is this done by a official, uh, a official organization, not, not done by somebody? Or is there a specific qualification for reserved activities necessary? So these two questions must be not fulfilled altogether, but it can be either one or two or the second one. So if we look again at this map Katarina showed, I will only mention that we have some uh, differences in Europe because we are a very, have a big biodiversity in our countries. If you look to the Northern countries, there is a quite a different understanding. They have no chamber system. So they don't have regulations of, uh, of professions. They don't understand why do we need this? 
it's, it's another thinking. So in those countries, there will never be a regulation in the sense of uh, European Union because uh, there is an under, another understanding. Also, our profession runs very good in those countries. If you go to Norway, where we had the World Council 2019, there are 800 uh, landscape architects and there are respected and well known in the society. So it doesn't uh, depend on this regulation in those countries. And then we have uh, uh, another problem. We have the problem that the countries are responsible themselves to go to the European Union and say, there are landscape architects and they are regulated. If the countries don't do it, the European Union doesn't care. It's not their responsibility, it's the responsibility of the countries. And there you see it's a green country, it's Austria. Austria is regulated, but not in the sense of European Union because they are inside the engineers. And if you ask the, the uh, Austrian uh, uh, ministry, they say, we will never do it for landscape architects because landscape architects are already inside the, the engineers. As, and we did it for the engineers. Therefore, we have also uh, national countries where we have the same stage, like in the blue countries, in the regulated countries, but they are not on the list. And then we have those countries uh, also mentioned by Katerina, like Switzerland, or you see here on the bottom, on the right side, Israel. Israel wants to be uh, in Europe, uh, which are not in the European Union, but have similar uh, regulations. Uh, you see here is the, uh, the link to the database uh, if you want to look. And here is the copy of this, uh, what you can find in the European, uh, uh, on, the web, on the web page of the um, DG Growth. And there are all uh, uh, member states listed which did uh, brings this information to the European Union. The very interesting thing is we are not, uh, if the Europe will perhaps have more information, if you go to the second line from the top, uh, from the uh, down, uh, there is Switzerland, uh, but only the, um, the region of Geneva, it is in this official list. Why? I don't know. So that's what I wanted to uh, tell you about the regulation. Now, uh, some additional uh, points to common training framework. What is a common training framework and how could uh, CTF landscape architecture be designed? Yes, as Katerina said, a common training framework is defined in the PQD in Article 49A, and it is so important for our profession uh, because this is the only possibility where we can get automatic recognition. So we will not reach an article like the architects, that's over. The European Union says, no, we will never do it again. So the only thing is, uh, to do it by uh, Article 49A. And as far as we know, Gerion uh, made a research. So the snow, the ski teachers and another other profession uh, has reached this by Article 49A. So for the purpose of this article, there are different points which have to be fulfilled to, you can, to be able to use this common training framework. And one precondition is that uh, uh, the member states uh, must uh, 
be, as Katarina said, at least one third must be regulated. But here in the first sentence, there is a definition. What is the common training framework? It is a common set of minimum knowledge, skills, and competences necessary for the pursuit of a specific profession. So this is very close related to education, but you will, we will see uh, later on that there are also other points which are very important in a common training framework. Yes, and you, here you see some points which are listed in the PICOD. Uh, and I will only reflect to uh, some of them. The common framework enables more professionals to move across the member states. Uh, Katharina uh, told us from the result of the uh, PRR uh, project that there are restrictions to move across the member states, but we have to uh, to count this really in a big amount. Otherwise, uh, the DG growth says oh, it's not so much. It's not so important. So we have really to look upon this uh, uh, to look upon this point, and therefore Katarina made a very detailed. Uh, a report on this point and we have to work on this. Uh, the second point is that at least one third of the member states should be regulated. This we have fulfilled now when we tried uh, to get in contact with DG Gross uh, the first time six years ago. So we had not one third and as in the meantime if La Europe could encourage national associations to uh, get to this regulation. And this is the only thing we can do that if La Europe encourages national associations to be active on national level, European Union will not look about. It's, it's a task of the professional, uh, of the national uh, level. And at the national level, uh, our national associations are important that they press uh, the administration and the ministry to get these regulations. Yes. Then uh, the second thing is that also this CTF is accepted at least at one third of the member states. So this will be a task for the future if we have a CTF said also one third of the member states say, okay, we follow this CTF. Yes, uh, I will not go to all, but very important is the point D, the common training framework shall be based on levels of the EQF. The EQF, you see the link down and we have in the afternoon, uh, I will uh, tell something about EQF. The European Qualifications Framework is, is a frame condition for education in general in Europe. And uh, this uh, point D says the CTF has to follow this EQF, uh, in which way we will uh, sort out. Uh, and then I will only reflect to point F. Uh, the common training framework has been prepared following a transparent due process, including the relevant stakeholders. This, uh, Gintaras and, and Gerion and so on, uh, we try to follow this point as far as we can do in the project Innerland, that the Innerland uh, project is an open process and includes relevant stakeholders so that we can show to the, uh, the European Union. Yes, so uh, you will see this later on. Gerion uh, uh, and Margarita have a better uh, uh, 
graphic than uh, this is an old graphic, but uh, you see that there are a lot of uh, education documents in European in um, our profession already, which can be used for the common training framework. And this is, I think, a special quality of our profession that we have international and European education documents. Uh, the only task we will have is to put this together to a house and uh, then to fulfill the uh, CTF requirements. So last slide. So uh, we have already open questions. What are the frame conditions of DG growth for the design of a CTF uh, uh, landscape architecture? We don't know exactly. We have to find out uh, and to communicate with them. And then the, de the design of the CTF uh, LR, uh, there is already uh, understanding and a proposal uh, inside Inuland, uh, worked out by Cherion in, in, uh, mainly. And we will, after the short break, go to this uh, possible design. We have no feedback of DG growth now. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation, <coughs> Fritz. We have a question for Sylvie Van Damme from Belgium. She's asking if uh, the definition in inter international standard classification occupations, it is uh, generally ex approved. Uh, so the old uh, definition is inside the ISCO. The new definition is approved by the World Council and it is uh, uh, agreed with the ILO representative, but because the process of uh, modification is starting now and will last one, two, three years, it cannot be a final decision. It is as far as they know, they agreed and say, yes, this is fine. They also corrected some uh, things, but uh, we have not a paper or a decision, an official decision now. Thank you. For the rest of the question, we'll uh, put it at the end of the session, the morning session at least. Thank you very much. <laughs>